continuing on. So this time we need to spider ball our way up this side of the ruins. We also have some Senjus here. I kind of want to take them down just in case they drop some missiles for me. So we're using a green and yellow palette here. Viewers suggested I should try using my dragon colors. Of course, with a four color palette, there's not a lot you can do as far as tie-dye is concerned. So I just used my more natural green and yellow. Overall, I think it looks pretty nice. Alright. So let's just get this rock out of the way. And in we go. And we have a Metroid. Early shots against Metroids that need to hatch or mutate, they don't count. Where'd you go? There you are. Nice try. So nothing beyond there, so let's just drop down. That was also the last load-bearing Metroid for this area. We'll worry about lava drainage later on, though. We have more exploration to do. Such as this hidden passage here. And here we have Autoed. It's basically a mechanized and far more durable version of the Hornobes from earlier. They just slowly hop after you. Here in the prize room, though, we get the Wave Beam. Now, since Samus can only use one beam at a time in this game, we're not freezing stuff anymore. In return, though, we get a far stronger beam that can pierce through walls. Nice trade-off, if you ask me. The major drawback to the wave beam, as far as I'm concerned, is the more erratic firing pattern. It can make it a bit tricky to hit smaller targets like Yumbo. But still, overall, it's a really good beam to have on hand. So let's just go through here. Don't mind the wall fires. And in this prize room we get... the high jump boots. These are pretty much exactly what they say on the tin, we can jump a lot higher now. But there's more fun to be had in here. If we bomb our way through here... We get an energy tank. Hey, we're celebrating here. Stop spitting fire, that is very rude. We also get a missile pack. <laughs> I'm not sure why the wall fires are not affected by the fanfare freezing everything else. I don't think that ever crops up in a way where it's a threat, though. It's just kind of funny that it happens. So, time to get back out of here. We can use the remains of the wall fires as handy little stepping stones. Or you can just spider ball up the left hand wall if you want. I just think that looks more stylish. So, farther down. And we go in here. And we get missiles! And we get more missiles! Everyone loves missiles! So, let's go down here... ...and get even more missiles! Delicious! With that, though, we're pretty much done with this area. Not the full sector, though. There is one more thing we need to go get. So let's just make our way back out of here. High jump is just so handy. So 
So now we need to bomb jump and stick into the tube. And up we go! Third floor, ladies' power suits. And back out we go. Now the last thing we need is at the top of the ruins, so let's bomb this wall and prepare to go up the wall again. From here though, High Jump can handle it. And here we have the Blob Thrower. Yeah, I think they were running out of names. As the name suggests, it throws blobs at you. The Wave Beam does a number on it though. Any other beam or missiles? You have to aim down from above and hit the center of the flower bowl. That's that piercing ability of the wave beam working for you. And it's beautiful. And it's prize room time. And our prize is a bonus boss. Meet Arachnus. It's immune to everything other than bombs. If you know what you're doing, though, it's pretty easy to fight him. They don't feel the need to tell us what this power-up is for some reason, but it's the Spring Ball. With this, you can jump while in ball form. It's pretty handy. You can use it to do things like this. Now, one thing about the Spring Ball I'm not sure on. I don't know if it stacks with the high jump boots to where it affects the jump height of the Spring Ball as well. Leap of Faith! And she sticks the landing. With that, we're done with this sector. Now, technically, I could just use the save station right behind me, but this was a pretty short recording session, so let's just go ahead and go to the next sector and save there. No reason not to. Hi there, Septogs. You guys are completely harmless. Good to know. Rock Icicles. Apparently it's a case of dueling wikis. The place where I saw the term Rock Icicle was Wikitroid. But there's another Metroid wiki, the Metroid Database, that instead refers to them as Yodare. It sounds a little more like that would be an official name, but I'm still not sure if it really is or not. It's the problem with them not having appeared in the instruction booklet. So, there's the lava line again, so let's go this way. That constant background buzz makes the music here very unsettling. And here we have another new enemy. This is Halzine. It just kind of bubbles around back and forth. The thick plating on the sides, though, it guards it from attacks. Unless, of course, they pierce. Anything else you have to aim from above or below. We also have more lava. We also have the Pincher Fly, another of the back and forth enemy types. No going down there, thanks to those spikes. So, let's just go in here. And save point. So with that, time for another quick refreshing pause. Back in a moment. So before we close it out for this one, a 
quick trip down memory lane. Time to get a little nostalgic here with one of my most solid remembrances as far as Metroid 2 is concerned. Which does also kind of severely date the last time I really seriously sat down and played this game. The memory concerns... Nintendo Serial. Yep, this used to be a thing. And as a kid, I loved it. I kind of miss it these days. I remember it being pretty tasty. It was a two-in-one cereal box with two smaller packages inside. One half was fruit-flavored and themed around the Mario series, and the other half was berry-flavored, themed around the Zelda series. So, what does this have to do with Metroid, then, you might ask? Well, the inside of the box would sometimes have gaming tips for Nintendo games. One box just happened to have info on Metroid 2, which I was playing at the time. I had just found Arachnus, but didn't really know how to deal with it. I tend to have a hard time thinking of Samus's bombs as an attack method. I usually just more think of them as an exploration tool, for getting through certain walls and blocks. So, looking at the tips, they talked about Arachnus, and mentioned needing to use bombs to fight it. So it was that moment of, oh, that's what you have to do. Of course, I still didn't really know how to fight it as easily as I did in the video here, but yeah, that was the last time I really had seriously sat down to play Metroid 2, back in the days of Nintendo Serial. Ah, memories.